Spanish. I understand, but I don't speak it. But it's quite similar to Portuguese. There is so many different Portuguese. Okay, hello, hi, welcome, everybody. Um, so this is our Blender Network uh, annual report. Uh, I am Francesco, and uh, Pablo is there, <laughs> uh, finishing his uh, uh, quick lunch. Um, again, welcome, everybody. Um, so to start off, uh, I want to, to just Get an idea. I mean, now we are not many. Hopefully, after the presentation finishes in the other room, also we get joined by more people. But for a start, uh, I wanted to know who is here. So, for example, who is uh, already a Blender Network member right now? Can you? Ah, oh, okay. So less than half. And uh, everybody knows what the what the Blender Network is. Um, Everybody knows what the Blender Network is. You are, you are aware of the Blender Network initiative. You would like a little clarification? Yeah, you are interested in that. Okay. Um, there is a button that you have to press, um, Pablo, in order yes. to. Okay. Um, okay. So just a, just a quick intro for the people who don't know what the Blender Network is. Uh, Blender Network is an initiative from uh, uh, Blender Foundation, and uh, it's. Uh, an initiative to build and maintain a network of uh, Blender professionals and uh, uh, studios, individual freelancers, and also uh, educators, and uh, to have them available in this platform. As Don called it, was like the yellow pages of Blender. So uh, it's 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 a really good uh, official initiative from Blender Foundation to try to promote professional use of Blender and uh, to help professionals to get connected with each other and to get good visibility and good credibility out there in the professional uh, world. And, uh, and so what we, what we do is mainly we maintain a website, blendernetwork.org, where members can have a, a profile page where they can show it works uh, more or less like their own online portfolio. 
and uh, and they can maintain connections between each other and so on. And uh, and this is uh, a subscription-based website for uh, uh, there is an annual fee for freelancers is 50 euros for uh, corporate uh, members is uh, 250 euros and we also have an uh, educational membership that is for free and in order to get an educational membership you um, should prove uh, that you are actually working for a high education uh, uh, for high education like a university for example or a college uh, and so on so this is what uh, the blender network is uh, about and uh, this is uh, what our um, agenda for today is about um, some something I've, I've already told you about like you know what the blender network is so the, the stories is what what people are actually doing with the blender network what they can achieve with the blender network uh, then we're gonna get through some of the updates so what has been going on in the last year and uh, some uh, insight on the, on the network uh, numbers so how many visitors do we get and how much traffic it is and how much visibility do you actually get if you are on the platform what is coming next and then we are open for questions so we try to go through this presentation uh, quite uh, smoothly so that then we have time to talk because we're really interested in knowing if uh, you know you have feedback if you have questions if you have suggestions we're really open for that and we're really trying our best to make the network as cool as it can be um, as I was mentioning before uh, I mean um, we have freelance members and corporate members and educational members um, we have quite a large number of freelance members and um, We've been um, maintaining the Blender network for over a year now. Uh, the, the project is still relatively young, and uh, last year it was our uh, first um, yearly report, so we really launched uh, the, the new version. We were announcing the new version of the website. Um, we were announcing a job board. We had a lot of promising things uh, on the way, and uh, during the past year we actually, you know, uh, we, we, we checked out what, what happened, and uh, a lot of <laughs> um, many of these, like this is just a very small selection of some of, uh, of our freelance uh, uh, members of, of, of our network and we try very hard to, to keep uh, connected to them, to keep in touch, to know how is it going, what are they doing, is the network helping them, is it not helping them, what, what do they do, like what do they use it for and many of these guys uh, they, they get they get work they get uh, contacted via their network pages and uh, they discover about other people working on similar they have similar uh, interest uh, in blender and they just do commercial work and uh, it turns out to be quite successful um, last year we published a uh, an article from uh, Sebastian which you probably everybody knows Sebastian Koenig and he wrote about uh, how it worked uh, with, uh, with him, with his experience. So he, was, uh, he, he got contacted by somebody who needed some uh, special motion track video. And uh, he was like mostly he could handle it because he knows how to work with, with uh, motion tracking. He's very involved in the development of it. And uh, uh, he figured out that he needed also some help. So what he did then was uh, still within the network. He searched for someone. Uh, I think it was the lie, <laughs> oh, which is here, by the way. Um, and the two of them teamed up together to actually deliver the the, the product that the client uh, asked. Because in that case, Sebastian needed some custom software development made, and he was able to find someone who helped him to help him. And it happened very, very quickly and very easily, and the project was a success. Without it, it would have been probably a bit harder, because also when you, you know, if you have a project, you have a client, and you say, okay, I'm going to do the job, and at some point you say, ah, I need to involve another person. If you have a tool like the Blender Network, where the person has a nice profile with a nice portfolio, you say, okay, I need to involve this other person because that's what we need. It's very easy and it, it's very professional because it's open for the client to see what happens, and uh, it's good for. For the member too, because he gets his visibility. So this is uh, just a little example of what and how our members are doing. And then uh, these are currently our corporate members. We don't have a lot, but uh, uh, they are all doing pretty well. And uh, some of them are doing uh, a lot of things. Probably somebody recognizes uh, CG Cookie, which you know uh, doesn't really need a lot of introductions. But we have 
the man over there is uh, um, James Neal from Character Mill. He's an Australian-based studio, and uh, they've been making a, a quite famous uh, Kajimba pilot. It's like a, a wacky animation with uh, Australian uh, animals. It's, uh, very cool. And they were involved in, uh, in the Gooseberry uh, teaser. teaser production. And uh, we have uh, Ideas Fijas. It's uh, an Argentinian studio that is working on a feature film with Blender. So they employ a large number of people to actually work, and it's it's uh, it's working. Pablo was there. It's it's I true. We sent him to check. <coughs> you know, is, it, is it really true that people yeah. make films with Blender? Turns out, yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, and then uh, uh, on the two extremes, you have uh, we have uh, Renegade and uh, Render Street, which are both. Um, uh, rendering uh, services. So if you if you work, you know you need to do uh, a lot of rendering, or if you have a very heavy visualization work to to complete. Um, those are network partners that are really interesting for you because they offer great services and they are they are very well connected with us too. So we really recommend them to. Uh, we really recommend users who come in and say, hey, I need to do this job, how can I do? And we send them there because the guys are doing really a great job. So this is pretty much how it works uh, with the corporate <coughs> members. And then maybe I leave the word to Pablo, who is going to briefly tell you about what's actually been going on. Yeah. You want this? Yeah, sure. Why not? Hello, everybody. My name is Pablo. I was eating before. <laughs> So I'm going to go uh, through some of the updates that uh, we've been doing on the, during the last year. Uh, as Francesco said, the last year, previous year, previous Blender conference was the, the first year we had the Blender network, uh, like uh, this baby, you know, like, okay, now <coughs> take care of it. So uh, we've been improving and, and announcing new stuff, like, okay, we want the shops boards, you know, to people to uh, not only get in touch between the, the, the members themselves, you know, or more like... Uh, offer like okay, I'm looking for this kind of artist doing this kind of thing and uh, uh, more make it more public. So that's one of the, the main things, and the, the ones that we are proud of. But there are uh, more stuff coming. So uh, one of the updates was the Blender Foundation Certified Trainer Program. This is uh, before it was a, it's a project that started before the Blender Network even. It's a way of the foundation to give uh, a certification to teachers. The trainers um, to prove that they are like really involved in the Blender community. They know the latest stuff about Blender, um, what's what's going on, and who to contact. Like if they need a special uh, education on a certain uh, topic. This uh, we try to link it with the Blender network because it's, it's a big part. Education is a big part of a, of a networking environment, right? So we decided uh, now th that we have Blender org. Uh, better looking and something more modern, uh, we decided, okay, let's let's work with the Blender Foundation Certified Trainer. Let's get the network, let's, let's get the Blender ID, and there are many other things that we are now uh, getting into one uh, single system. One of them is, uh, as we say, the Blender Foundation Certified Trainer, which has its own page now. We're still working on it, but now if you go to Blender.org slash certification, you can learn more about uh, what what it is. And uh, if you're a certified trainer, you can <coughs> check out like uh, what is your status of your application, if it's approved. Um, in the past, it was all pretty manual. Like we have to send an email and you get back and okay, what are you doing? And uh, it was a bit more of, of work. And sometimes you get you uh, you lose contact with this specific trainer. And Blender has a new version every three months, so it's important that we need to know that every trainer is actually using the latest and best of Blender, or at least knows what's wrong with this version, and like, oh, no, 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 for this thing, maybe it's better to use uh, two versions ago, because X reason, right? Uh, which never happens, but it could happen. But it's important, right, that the Blender uh, trainers know that, know what's Blender about, and who to reach for uh, anything specific. Um, we have now this nice, very nice page, but this is only the front end. Uh, you can uh, see like uh, if when it expires, how to become a trainer. Uh, this is well, how to get the, the logo and a quick uh, frequently asked questions. We will uh, work in improving this. We want to have a, a sort of a hub for trainers and all uh, education and certification part of Blender all in one place, you know, like 
okay, where is the manual? Where can I reach for this? I need to uh, teach this specific thing. And there's a mailing list, but we want to improve that. So uh, this is uh, the front end. This is like the, what the trainer sees. But the, the board, uh, when, when you want to apply it, we all now have, uh, this is only for the administrators, and we have a better way to see what's going on and what is, what is the status of the trainers. Uh, what are they doing? So now we're actually like, you know, okay, so you apply on this date, and then this is uh, where you are, this is your status, and this is what's going on now with your application. So right now it's all in one place, and people can, uh, the trainers can update their profile more uh, easily, and we can approve them or see what's going on. So it, it's much better, and this will uh, make it easier for us to um, follow their progress as uh, trainers. I'm just taking it more seriously. And it's attached to your Blender ID, so if you go to any other Blender or website, you will see and show your status, which is great. The jobs board, this is more in the, but well, the previous part is also Blender network, Blender BFCT. But uh, this is something we wanted to work on uh, the last year, and it's proved to work. It's the whole year we have been uh, getting new jobs, one per week at least, more than sometimes two per week. Uh, new job posts about uh, people, okay, I want this Blender head in this, this specific thing, work in this specific field, and uh, um, publish it. So this has been proved to work, and we are going to uh, improve it, make it better, easier to search what kind of job, and uh, just make it better, and brighter, faster, and, faster and slimmer. And, uh, the, for the numbers themselves, that's f that's for the apps. There's there's a, a a bit more uh, a bit later in the talk, but uh, I'm gonna leave to Francesco to talk about the numbers. Okay, so super quick. Um, we've been we of course uh, keep checking how things are going. If nobody visits the Blender Network website anymore, it means that it's not going very good. If a lot of people visit the website, it means it's going good. And uh, so that's uh, what we do. Uh, sometimes we check. Um, because actually, you know, numbers are relative, then it's really important how you connect people, how available you are to support them, how you point, even if you know you manage to handle two or three people per month to uh, get them a deal, and then they get, a, they get a gig, they get a job, and they have to work for like five months, that's already great, so you don't need like a hundred million page visits, but if you have them, it's nice. Um, we have uh, a quarter of a million page views. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, with about 60,000 unique visitors, so it's like a fair, fair amount of traffic. Month, yeah. So <clears throat> a lot, around the 12K visits per month. And compared to the last year, it's like twice as much of the traffic. So it's, it's growing pretty well. And uh, a lot of them are new visitors. So of course, there is a lot of growing interest. More websites are linking to the Blender network. More people are talking about it. It takes time, you know, like once it's out there, people need to see, ah, oh, yeah, it was successful, it works. Uh, I, I might join, I might not. So it's, it's growing well. Um, we have uh, over 200 active members and uh, we over 1,700 connections between them because we have uh, this feature in the network that allows members to show and to endorse each other. So we try to really be strict with this and uh, encourage uh, people who have worked together or who really know each other and would recommend to work it with one another or would recommend the other person to have this connection, but it's not like a LinkedIn style where like it's a wild connection to anyone, your kindergarten uh, acquaintance that is now working, I don't know, is uh, doing something that is completely unrelated to what you're doing and it asks you to be connected. We really try to be uh, serious with this so that when somebody visits a profile, the few links, the few connections that it has are actually good. So that is uh, still a good number. Um, just to give an idea of the balance, is still uh, heavily is uh, freelancers and uh, the corporate side is growing a little bit and then the rest is uh, education in terms of uh, how many members, how memberships are distributed. And as Pablo was saying, we, we have a lot of uh, job postings, we try to keep this growing, but already having one job post per week in average is, uh, is quite good. Um, and uh, yeah, so this was just a quick overview. So then we are about to wrap it up, and I will just leave it again to Pablo to tell us what is uh, coming up next. Yeah, so we, I already talked about what it's already implemented, like all these Blender Foundation certified trainer program, 
and the system for it is all working. We've been using it already for a few months, and we still have to. We, we are working on getting it better, and uh, that way I'm going to talk about also for the, for the network. But I still have to send an email to all the current Blender uh, VFCTs, Blender Foundation Certified Trainers, so they can get into the new system. And we are going to be a bit more strict about it uh, than in the past. So get ready. <laughs> um, so what's, what's coming? Brand new networks <coughs> website. You've probably seen this already one, two, three times because the, the new, uh, it's, it's always an iteration, right? Uh, this is, as we said, the, the last year was the first year we had it, and we, we worked, we made it all over again. We made a new system, and this is what you have right now in, in blendernetwork.org. But um, there's this new Blender ID connection, and there are other, many other features that, and the VFCT connection that also needs to be uh, more uh, tightly working together, so we are making a new one. But don't panic, you will notice, you won't notice much. Uh, there is a bit of front-end uh, um, and back-end, front-end <laughs> um, rewrite. Uh, Blender ID integration, so uh, the Blender ID, for those who don't know, who it's just a, a yeah, who doesn't have a, a Blender ID here? One, two, who three. Who doesn't or who doesn't? Huh? Who doesn't, or who doesn't? Who doesn't have who doesn't? a Blender ID? Okay, that's, uh, that's another people, that's cool. That one has half a Blender ID. <laughs> it's just an email. You get an email, you type in your password, and then you get one. It's just an account, it's just, just, just that. But uh, it's one login system where we try to connect with many other Blender services right now. Um, not only the Blender network, but also like we were saying, the Blender VFCT, so if you're a trainer, you get your badge, whatever you are in the Blender community. In the Blender, this is a Blender foundation uh, system. It's part of Blender itself. Um, but maybe in the future, who, say, who knows, maybe we can have a, an add-on to, to log in with my Blender ID and get my settings, for example, why not? Like I go to another computer, log in, ta -ta, I get my own key map and all the weirdness and the, my own Blender 101, like uh, Tom said. You know, like uh, it's something, it, it can grow, it can be much, much bigger. Um, but right now, this is the, the connection we have. Also, the Blender Cloud, if you're a cloud member, it's with the same login system, so you can check uh, if, when it expires, your subscription, or um, it's, it's all one little family, which is cool. VFCT, like I said, and uh, on the design part, it's going to be pretty much the same, the same as it looks now. Uh, it, this is a little work in progress that we are doing right now. Uh, some things you don't see here is that the website is way faster now, and it's much easier to uh, implement new, new features. The rest, it looks, uh, it looks pretty much the same. The, the header is the same. Um, it looks a bit closer to Blender.org, which is a good thing because we want to uh, you know, like show that it's, we're all one big family. And um, the uh, other things, like for example, the gallery, now we are not limited to only four images. We can, you can have a limited amount of uh, images. Well, virtually oh. limited, <laughs> limited. But also videos is, of course, a placeholder, but Everything is, is a bit more uh, tight uh, connected. And if you're a VFCT, it also shows up here. And the moment you stop being one, it's automatic. And if you give uh, like a Blender, uh, if you give a talk at the Blender conference, you should also, you can find a way to, uh, to show it. This is also connected to your Blender ID because uh, every speaker here at the conference has a Blender ID. And the talks they're giving this year or the previous year last year, 2013, it's all connected and saved on your own profile, which is super cool. And that's it. Uh, I mean, the, the big website is uh, it's a, it's a big project, but uh, that's pretty much <coughs> it. And uh, soon you have more news. Any questions so far? Yes? Is the Blender ID going to be tied into the Fabricator, developer of that Blender work? It's... Yeah. It's a, Fabricator is a big system. At the moment, it's not connected. It's a different, different system, but it's the only, only, the only look, one. We, we looked into it. We'll look into it because it's really, uh, the, the idea is just a, an email and a password. It's, it's nothing. So there should be ways to, to connect it. Yeah. Anything not related or like uh, what you would like to see, what you'd like to, yes. W 
this was like two years ago when it started. Yeah, yeah, it was a mess. That's why. We yeah, we took over, and uh, it's, it should be much easier now. But you can always email support at lendernetwork.org, and uh, we'll take care of it. It should be super simple now. Um, but you can talk about it more. But it, it's 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 weird. Maybe it was when it really started. It was. Uh, yeah. No. No. It really should be it should be super simple, and that's what we're focusing on making it simpler. <laughs> but uh, if you already had a, if you have a. a Cloud account, or you you bought something on the Blender eShop, it shouldn't be any different to be on the on the network. It should be the same. Yeah, but yeah, in the beginning was another administration, so uh, might be weird. Yes. Yes, I also had a similar experience, and uh, I I thought I just give up. But yeah. then after a couple of months, or maybe maybe more, I. I checked it again and I, I was signed in and I had my my Blender Network uh, page and uh, I just had to fill it up. Yeah. This happened without me knowing about it. Yes. So yeah, that's, but uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Would you remind people every now and again yes. that they are a member of the Blender Network and to just go and update and keep informed? Because I forget. Yes, uh, yes. I just made a note right now, some day, a random day in November, go to the Blender Network and see what's there, because I don't know what, <laughs> what I have placed there, and that I'm not visiting for a long time. Yeah, when you, and you made it, you probably had a profile, and then the, the payment didn't work quite well, but your profile was still there. So when we switched to the new system, to not go over this, the hassle of the, the making a new account or whatever, we made the accounts so and we gave everybody a free year for like from March last year to March this year, it was, it was completely free. So yeah, maybe that's why. But uh, we're taking care of it. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Giovanni. Um, okay. I want to talk on, in a workshop, in an architecture workshop using um, we we want to get uh, um, for all our tutors, our group, uh, the, um, the certified program. But uh, in the requirements, I, I noted that um, he's requested a live uh, class uh, exactly. video yeah. uh, example. Is, uh, is it suitable to, uh, do you accept uh, a lesson from uh, an ongoing uh, lesson in Polytechnico? Yeah. Or is, is that it has to be a strict tutorial uh, from home? No, no, it's, it's open. It has to show that at least you know how to talk with people. <laughs> you know, like uh, you know how to speak and how to communicate because it's important to know that if, if somebody asks you about how to uh, make a cube in Blender, you know that, but also how to make a building exploding in Blender, you know how to do that too. And even if your skills as a as a artist are not the best, you know where to point, and you can say no. But there is the the, the cookies had this tutorial, and this one, uh, these people made this other tutorial, so you can at least uh, like guide the, the the user, the student, in a, in a way. It doesn't have to be specifically about Blender itself, the the live class, but it has to show skills that you can you know how to communicate and how to point stuff and. <laughs> Right. Language like, uh, uh, no, not really. The application should be done in English, but the live class or whatever you're you're, you're uh, teaching in any language is is fine. We'll find a. Our team has we, we can understand uh, Italian, Spanish, uh, um, English. Well, <laughs> English, German, uh, Japanese, uh, many, many, many languages. Yeah. Indian, we get some uh, Mandarin or uh, Portuguese, or we we will find a way to to understand some applications if they're in a, in a language Russian. <laughs> if they're in a language we don't understand, we, it's going to take a bit longer, but we are going to uh, go through it. So, so it's to be a certified trainer, uh, we need to contact you anyway. Yeah, you go to Lender.org slash certification, and then you have the the contact form, and you can you can get in touch with us. Language is not a limitation. It's actually better. Like if you have, a, if you're teaching in this in this language that none of us uh, can follow, it's even better because then uh, more people get to to learn Blender with their own other language. Important. And what's the difference between corporation and freelancing? Oh, that's the, that's for the network itself. Uh, when you play as a trainer, you can you have to choose an account. 
but it can be. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you what, what you mean. So basically, the concept is 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 mostly about branding. So if you are a freelancer in the network, you show up as an individual, and that has one type of communication. But if you are a corporate, you see you have a different. It's a different type of profile, meaning that you can use your brand, that you can have your custom URL to be linked, and that you just get visibility and you get uh, you know you get exposed in a different way. And we try our best to give uh, uh, to. to to give good connections to the uh, corporate members because usually it means that they offer a service or that they are a larger studio. So it's a different thing than being a freelancer. So also depending on the contacts and the job requests that we get coming in because we also get direct uh, job uh, connections that we don't even publish on the board because we can directly point them to the right people. So if you are a studio, of course, you have an advantage and that's why you should be, for example, a, a corporate member. Um, and another cool thing about the network is that it's made by people. So you can actually send an email to support at blendernetwork.org and you will get somebody reply. You can send an email saying, okay, I need an artist that knows how to do this specific thing that is available in Switzerland in March. And I need that, you know, like help me. And we have people, we are uh, looking at, uh, we know all, all the profiles in the network, so we can point you uh, to that specific artist or at least give you an option like, okay, these three artists are really good at what you need, and we can uh, we can get in touch with you, or we, we are like the, the connection, so you don't have to look directly. These artists, you can just ask us, and we will take care of it. Uh, that's the cool part of the, the, the human part of the network. Yeah. Okay, I think we can maybe wrap it up. And, uh, yeah, if there are no... Uh, uh, more? Yeah, one more. So we had that as a goal already last year to try to get more communication out. Communicating is uh, sometimes uh, uh, difficult and <laughs> time consuming. So we didn't put a, a lot, a lot of effort because there is already a lot of passive activity going on even without us uh, going on about it. But it's definitely in the plans to give at least more visibility, reach out in, you know, uh, other uh, communities or you know uh, web platform just to make sure that the fact that the network exists is visible we it's one of our goals for the next year we didn't put it there because it's also difficult to measure but it's definitely in the plans to make it as widespread as possible it's uh, our mission yes uh, in the network there is currently an events feature that we try to we're going in, in, going to improve in this new system is every week at least at one or two uh, Blender events everywhere. There are conferences, there are uh, courses, there are, uh, then there is always one Blender Network member involved. So uh, we invite you, all of you, to, uh, if you have an event, just uh, send us an email or, or fill the form online. Uh, it's going to be much easier now with this new system to get new events going on and maybe we can have like a warm up, you know, what's going on in the Blender community and what are the uh, network members doing now. So yeah. And one last thing. <laughs> yes. I'm the person who started the Blender Network, but uh, for me the most important thing of the network is one, to show that there are professionals who work, but especially to help the professionals. So the Blender Network is also your connection with the teams who work on Blender that work on Blender because that's the, that I want to have also organized much better as well. It means if you have a development question, or development, development targets, or development issues, or whatever, how do I get my stuff fixed? Or how do I find somebody who can help me? Uh, that's something I will always try to help as good and as fast as possible. So uh, being visible at the Network is therefore very important. But then you might get the support businesses and the developers also reaching out to the network members. But this is a chicken egg problem. We need visible professionals to get support developers to start thinking, hey, there are developers, or there are artists, there are studios, they need me. That's a nice way of uh, getting Blender to become more powerful. Thank you very much.
So, yeah, one last thing. Uh, this uh, conference is a very special moment, especially for Blender heads. So we are launching a, a special. So during the conference, from now until Monday, uh, you can use, uh, for new subscriptions, you can use the coupon code BCOM14, and you get 50% discount. So instead of the, for freelancer, instead of 50, you get to uh, 25, and the same for corporate, it's half the price. Wow. Yes, yes, that was a little surprise. Well, then I subscribe. Oh, you can go to blendernetwork.org, and then join. Click on join, and then you, you follow. You put the coupon code, VCOM14. It's not only for us here, but also online. Everybody can do it, and so, yes. Right. An invitation to come. So, thanks a lot. Go have lunch before all the sandwiches run uh, yes. out.